Hey you guys, movie retrospective time. This is the movie that won the poll once again. This is Jeepers Creepers from 2001. Now I'm wondering if people picked it specifically because of the controversy surrounding the director. <laughs> so let's kind of get that out of the way because honestly, I had forgotten about this. I had not seen, this is so weird. I thought that I saw Jeepers Creepers, not back when it came out, but like on cable. But when we were watching it, I was just kind of like, wait a minute, I don't think I saw this one. What I think I saw was the sequel, the second one, because the second one was the one with the bus and all the people in the, and the creeper attacking the bus, right? So I think with Ray Wise and shit. So I saw the second one, but I never did see the first one, even though I thought I did. What ended up happening with this, the guy that wrote and directed it, whose name is Victor Salva, uh, when this first came out, he had made a movie called Clown House, which I haven't seen. And uh, I guess he got in with like Francis Ford Coppola who helped him out like and you know gave him money for production. He was like an executive producer and stuff. So apparently on the set of Clown House, um, Victor Salva was caught um, you know essentially molesting a 12 year old who was also working on the movie like was in it the a movie. boy or a girl? Uh, I think it was a boy. Oh, okay. And uh, so he was caught, he went to prison. Um, I think he got a three year uh, sentence, but he only served 18 months, 15 months, something like that. And then he got out and he was on parole and shit like that. So then he went on to make Powder in 1995. Uh, if you guys remember that movie about the albino kid. I remember seeing that back in the day. Uh, and then Jeepers Creepers came out in 2001. And then Jeepers Creepers 2 came out in 2003. Now, when these first two Jeepers Creepers movies came out, we did have the internet, but it wasn't as widespread. So nobody found out really, like it wasn't uh, common knowledge that he was a convicted sexual predator. And this was back in 1988, I think, was when he got caught. Um, nobody found out that he was a convicted sexual predator until just before Jeepers Creepers 3 came out, which was like 2017, somewhere around there. So at that point, like, there was, like, a big stink. Like, people were going to, like, uh, you know, they, after they found out about it, they were like, oh, my God, we're going to, like, fucking boycott the movie or whatever. But, um, you know, it's like, I'm not saying that, like, what he did was good. Obviously, it was terrible. But he did get caught for it. He did go to prison. And he hasn't been caught since then. I'm not saying that he's not a piece of shit, because he is. But... I just wanted to get that out of the way, like, right, because you can't, and it kind of sucks because this is actually, like, a it's good, a great movie. it's a good yeah, movie, and it's, like, you can't really talk yeah. about it without yeah, just, uh, that, you know, stigma being, like, around it, so it's, like, we're always, so I always kind of just wanted to, like, say that from the, oh, from the outset. Corey Feldman, man, Corey Feldman, telling the truth, man, there's a lot of that shit going on in Hollywood, that's just how they are, a lot of them, I, I think it's many more than we, according to some of them girls off that damn island, it's more of them than you would ever think, and some of them are huge names that they didn't mention, but I know who they're talking about. I know who they're talking about. Yeah, so, it, so like I said, it's kind of shitty that, yep. you know, that this movie got, yep. you know, it's I, I kind of like to try to dissociate, you know, because... Honestly, if if we didn't watch stuff that was made by a shitty person, we there would be nothing to watch because most creative people have problems of like some kind or another. They're not all pieces of shit, obviously, but there's a lot of great pe great works of art, you know, books, and movies, whatever, that were created by people who are terrible people. Them shitty dudes that all stick together. They're like a mafia. But yeah, so so like I said, that's kind of like now. Interestingly, it's interesting that um, we ended up doing this movie now because I didn't actually know this going in, like when we watched it. But they're doing a reboot of it. They're gonna do like a new trilogy of this one of Jeepers Creepers. It's gonna be Jeepers Creepers Reborn. Okay, so you always, uh, they're and, always making good shit and then fucking it up by doing it again. Well, yeah, but like I said, so, yeah. so and Victor Salva is not gonna be involved in that. But they're doing like they're planning a new right. trilogy. The first one is supposed to be out in 2022 like i think they've already like finished uh you know kind of the filming and everything like that i think it's in post-production or pre or something like that so uh i didn't actually know that like i said when we were going into to do this movie i was just interested to see it because like i said i thought i had seen it because i knew about you know spoiler alert <laughs> i knew that the creeper was not a person. I knew that he was a demon and that like he had wings and stuff. And I'm like, well, how how would I have known that if I hadn't seen this movie? But I think I must have seen the second one. It's a great movie. 
It is. It's actually it's really, really good. I, um, think, I think a lot of it was borrowed from Gargoyles. It might have been. Um, you know, the TV made for TV movie that was pretty good back then. Yeah, time. we reviewed that a while yeah. back. Fun, fun movie to watch. I kind of feel like, well, Victor Salva said that, and honestly, some of the stuff about it, I might get into this a little bit later, but some of the stuff, like the lore around the creeper, uh, you know, the monster, is kind of like Pennywise in it, in the sense that it's like cyclical and like he kind of like smells people's fear and shit like that, the sort of. Uh, so it's that kind of thing. And also the beginning of it, like the first act, kind of has a little bit of like Duel or The Hitcher or something like that, where it's kind of like, it's almost kind of like a road movie type at first, like Duel is, like somebody being yeah. chased by somebody in a truck and you don't see them. And then it almost turns into like a stalker serial killer thing. And then it turns into like a monster movie yeah. because uh, the creeper is not human. Like he's a demon, essentially. But I guess he can drive a truck, huh? Wasn't that, wasn't that the creeper yeah. driving a truck? Well, he had like a human form. Okay. I think that... The lore around it was that, like I said, it was almost like a cicada type of thing where it was just like, I think it was every 23 years, yeah. uh, every every 23rd spring, he would like reemerge for 23 days and he goes around like eating people. Like he doesn't eat anybody. He eats people that have like a particular uh, body part that he needs like to regenerate so I guess essentially I haven't seen the sequels I saw the second one but it was a long time ago I don't really remember what happened in it but I so I don't know if they expanded the lore a lot more I'm sure they probably did but I guess he's essentially immortal because if he gets fucked up because he gets pretty fucked up in this movie and he eats like somebody's body part that that's fucked up it'll regenerate yeah. like in a very very short amount of time yeah, he does artwork with the dead bodies, too, which is pretty cool. That's a good idea. That is cool, although they didn't really explain why he does that. Because, honestly, he I guess maybe he just likes them and he because he preserves them. Because some of the ones yeah. that were there had been there for, like, a really yeah, long got time. Yeah, he a workshop and everything. He made, like, a Sistine-looking chapel of all these bodies of, like, men and women and boys and girls fucking in embraces. And they're kind of, like, chopped up and sewn together. It, it looks cool. Creepy as shit. It's not yeah. explained. It's just... Some kind of weird sadism, and it does kind of seem like he he's into women and kind of jealous of like loving relationships and shit, and wants to fuck them up and wants to, I don't know, maybe wants to be a part of one or, because he does some weird stuff at the end of the movie with this kid's body and looks through his eyes, kind of like he he wants to be that kid to get that girl. It's kind of what it seems. Well, that was his sister, though. Is that what it was? That girl was his sister. Okay. Yeah. They, they were brother and sister. Yeah, I, I didn't right. know if you didn't no, like, pick up on that. It just, it, just seems like, <laughs> it just seems like he was going to use that as a way to get to her. Didn't, Although, well, no, because he that. could have taken her. Yeah, but he didn't. But he didn't because she didn't smell right. She didn't have. Is that what it uh, was? The the creeper wanted Justin Long the whole pretty much the whole time because she because he smelled him, yeah. and uh, like I said, he he has like particular victims that he picks. He doesn't just eat people indiscriminately. Yeah. Um, if you have something that I guess is maybe compatible with whatever, so he had his he got his eyes fucked up, so he needed Justin Long's eyes. Yeah. He needed that character's eyes. But. Uh, I don't know, it's just, that was the body language that I read. It looked like he, because when she wanted to go with him, it, look, it looks like he was kind of wanting to take her, but he couldn't. And then later, it looks like he was kind of like assumed the identity of the, of, the, of the brother as a way of getting to her. That's the way I interpreted it, but, you know, maybe I'm wrong. No, yeah, I don't think that had anything to do with okay, it. I because, like, all, yeah, all the stuff they were saying about, like, the lore and everything, he just picked particular people based on how they smelled like when they were afraid and based on whatever body part he needed at that time okay. since he needed eyes and Justin Long smelled better because like I said he had an opportunity like at the end when you know she was saying she was trying to save her brother by saying you know take me instead but he was like nah and he just took the brother instead and left her yeah, there and she actually sh survives I think that girl who's played by Gina Phillips by the way her character's name is Trish I think she turns up in the third one too well, but I guess and the second the and the of, third one. To me, the eye contact thing, it looked like he wanted to take her, but couldn't. Like, it wasn't her time type of deal. That, Like, he had feelings for her. It's weird. That's just how I interpreted it. It looked like like a longing stare. And then next, then you see him later on, and he's got that same longing stare through, through like, her brother's eyes. Uh, I just thought he was going to, you know, fantasizing. Uh, I don't know. 
fantasizing that he was her, that, that, that he was that boy. And that's just how I interpreted it. Just because they were brother and sister doesn't mean that demon wouldn't do that. I don't think he gave a shit about incest. That's how I just took the whole thing as just kind of perverse. Maybe I don't know. I think maybe you're like thinking about it too much because I don't think, think about I don't think there was any of that. Right. Okay. Uh, and I don't think there was any of that. All either. right. I thought it was sexual. So. But okay. no, I don't think all it right. was. Um, because honestly, it's just kind of like okay. So if you haven't seen this movie, like I said, it came out in two thousand one. So you got uh, Trish and Derry, which is I guess is short for Darius. Uh, and Darius is played by Justin Long, obviously. This I don't think this was his first movie, but he's real young in it. Um, you know, so if you've seen, like, later ones that he was in, like, Tusk and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's pretty Idiocracy. young in this. Yeah. You know why I was thinking that it might have been sexual? Because the whole time I'm watching this movie, it's reminding me of Gargoyles. And that was the situation in Gargoyles. He wanted to breed with that human woman. Well, maybe that's why you were so thinking that. that. To me, it just seemed into... like the demon was kind of like, even though he had like a humanoid form, sort of. Yeah. But he just seemed to me like uh, just a predator okay. that was just like looking for, hey, I need a leg or, hey, I need some eyes. or yeah. and, and you smell like you're compatible with, was, with my so, body parts. He was so in couples together and doing stuff and like, looks well, just that romance, one and, and, just that and one. well, just that one. And the reason that they focused on that yeah. was because that was referring back to an urban legend that okay. they had talked about before about a couple that had disappeared right. like 23 years yeah. earlier, like on that same road. All right. You know what I mean? So that, so they were just showing, Hey, okay. those, those are those people that disappeared. I interpreted it as that he had like a, se a, fi a sexual type fi fixations over this that's how i interpreted it no okay. that's not what it was right. yeah like like i said that's why they they uh you know kind of focused on those two because you were meant to go oh this is the couple that disappeared 23 years ago that the urban okay. legend is about so it was right. real and that's this is where they ended up all right the rest of them kind of looked like that too though but well that might on that well and the ceiling. one guy that got that dumped down there it just looked like well his stomach was cut open because obviously like the creeper took needed stuff, yeah. needed whatever it was that was in there i don't know what he took exactly he sewed him back up didn't he? Yeah. I wonder why. Was there something in there? Did he put something in its place? I don't think so. Right. I don't know. Well, like I said, I, I kind of feel like maybe the lore of it, and I kind of like that about it, and like I said, maybe the lore is explored more in the other movies, because like I said, I saw the second one, but it's been a long time since I've seen it, and I haven't seen the third one. So... I don't know, like I said, I don't really know why he was making all these like artistic statements with the yeah. bodies. Maybe I think honestly I think it I don't even know if it, if there was a reason other than it looks cool and creepy. Yeah, it's funny cuz that's what stood out most to me about this movie. Yeah. I thought it was that was really what was significant is what he was doing with those bodies. No. It was never explained. It was I was just no. reading into it that I I thought he was getting ready to try to repopulate the, the world with his own kind type of deal with a bunch of demons, but I got that from gargoyles. Yeah. No, he was just trying to regenerate himself. Okay. Is all he was all trying right. to do. But, uh, yeah, so so you have this brother and sister. Um, one of them's older, like, Trish is older. And I guess uh, Derry is, like, on a break. I think it's supposed to be spring break uh, from college. And they're driving back to see their parents for the break. And this was actually, this movie was actually shot in and around Ocala, uh, mostly in Marion County. And I think a little bit of it was in Sumter County as yeah, well. Yeah, it's right up here. So that's, yeah, that's not Double very far from there. us at all. Maybe like less than an hour away. Yeah, and more Florida movies. Yeah, and that's actually, my mom lives in Ocala. Yeah. So uh, so the, it's funny because the terrain, I was just kind of like, yeah, that looks like Ocala, all right? Yeah. But yeah, so... So they're driving down this sort of isolated highway, and they're just kind of like doing brother sister shit, you know, fucking making fun of each other, making jokes and shit like that, like brothers and sisters do. And uh, then, like I said, you have kind of an extended sequence where it's almost kind of like a duel, where this crappy, like old rickety truck, yeah, like from the thirties, yeah, comes up behind the car and like seem seemingly attempting to you know, force them off the road. It's actually a real cool looking old truck, it's all Art Deco and everything around. Looks like a damn train. Yeah. I don't know where they got that truck. It was cool. Was I think the Wikipedia the page said, but I forgot. It looked like something from the 30s. Like they said what kind of truck it was, yeah. but I can't remember it what it was right It looked didn't now. look like an American truck. Like yeah, it was like really feet. weirdly shaped. Although, yeah. like I said, there were a lot of like trucks that came out maybe in the 30s and stuff that yeah. I didn't. It looked like a damn front of it. looked like a locomotive. Something out of Mad Max, all rusty and shit. I liked, too, that they were kind of like one of the games they were playing was they were um, trying to, like, uh, figure out all the license plates, like, all, like, puns and stuff. And the license plate on this truck said, well, you think that it says 
beating you, but then later on, like, you figure out, oh, it probably said be eating you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I like, is it, t- it took me like a couple minutes and I was just like, oh, okay, I get you. Uh, so yeah, that's funny. But yeah, so they're driving down this road in Florida, and this guy, like, tries to run them off the road. There's, like, kind of a big standoff, just, like I said, just, like, in Duel or, you know, the Hitcher road games, stuff like that. Uh, But after a while, it seems like the guy gives up and, like, takes off. So they're just kind of like, man, what the fuck was that all about? That dude was, like, really an asshole or whatever. So then they're, like, driving by, and then they happen to drive by this abandoned church, and they see the same truck parked next to the church, and it's broad daylight, And what they see is clearly a dude, like, in this long duster and hat, dumping what very, very obviously seems to be a body, like, wrapped in a bloody sheet and rope and stuff, down this big-ass pipe. Now, at this point, (laughs) I will say, like, they do kind of, um, they do kind of, like, kind of lampshade this or make it, or make kind of a thing where... They make a joke about it, so it doesn't seem like such a dumbass decision. Because if you, okay, legitimately, if you were driving down the road, a guy in a truck had just tried to run you off the road, like, really vociferously, and then you got away from him, uh, and then you saw that same dude dumping what looks like a body, like, down a pipe, would you turn around and go back? Fuck no. Yeah, call the cops. Yeah, I would go to the next town. And call the cops from there and be like, yeah, why don't you guys go back and check that out? Because I'm not going to. But obviously, this is a horror movie. So Justin Long's character, Derry, he goes, yeah, but, you know, what if one of what if somebody that he dumped down there because it was more than one body was like still alive? And what if it was you? Wouldn't you want somebody to come back and check on you and shit like that? I'm like, yeah, that's cool and everything. But call the cops, you know. But anyway, so so they go back and he, of course, hears something down in the pipe and he's kind of hanging down in there. And so his sister is like holding him, but then like something comes by, she's startled and he like falls into the pipe. And uh, that's when he finds all the Sistine Chapel of bodies. And the one person that got dumped in, in there that they saw dumped down there actually was still alive, but he, you know, uh, wasn't doing too good. And he died yeah. like a couple minutes this later. This time movie, I'm seeing this Sistine Chapel of bodies and it looks like the thing out of damn Alien 2, the alien nest. Yeah. I got all these ideas, the damn gargoyles and incubus <laughs> and all that shit. So I'm thinking this dude's trying to repopulate the damn planet with, with, with devil spawn. Well, they don't actually That's tell you because at they don't first, tell you, so. no, at I, first, what I was yeah. going to say is that at first they, they don't tell you until later on that the dude's not human. Yeah. They're trying to make you think that this is just like a crazy serial killer Yeah, because he's looking like, he looks like a person. They don't right. like show his face. I saw that wing later on, though, and I was like... Well, that was kind of like the big... That was yeah. supposed to be like the big holy shit moment yeah. in the movie yeah. where you're like, oh, my God. Well, I mean, you had been leading up to, like, at the end, right around the middle or end of the second act, yeah. you, you're you like, well, this dude, there, he has to be, like, superhuman or something because, yeah. you know, they're trying to do stuff, and he's, like, jumping over the car, and it seems like he's doing stuff that humans can't do. Uh, but then when that one wing comes out, yeah. like after that's the that's yeah. the moment you're supposed to yeah, realize, right. oh shit! Yeah, as soon as I saw that wing, I was like, okay, yeah, it's like a gargoyle. Yeah, and that's that's where it all started to come to me. So so yeah, so they so they find all these bodies and shit like that. Uh, Derry gets out of the basement, and then they go to this diner. And they try to tell everybody in town, this is a little weird too, because there's a bunch of people in the diner. So they run in there and they're just like, we just found all these fucking bodies. Oh my God. Like give us a phone or, you know, let us call the cops or something like that. And everybody in the diner like looks at them like either like they have three heads or I don't know, maybe because these these people just came in here with this crazy ass story. I, for a second, I thought, well, oh, the townspeople already know. And they're just like, shh, you know, like don't. We, we just, like, don't talk about that? I don't really know. But it, it doesn't really make that clear either. So they're kind of, like, freaking out. No one's really doing anything about it. And then the payphone rings. Now, this, this to me, seems like kind of um, a contentious point in the movie. Because some people don't mind it. Some people, um, you know, are really bothered by it. Because there's a character in this. Her name's Giselle. And she's a psychic. Now... To me, it seems like a little bit, and it doesn't bother me that much, honestly, but it seems like a little bit lazy storytelling 
to just introduce a psychic who automatically knows everything about the monster so that she can provide exposition. I mean, I guess there's worse ways to do it. And like I said, it didn't really bother me that much, but I've seen some reviews that were just kind of like, yeah, that was kind of stupid. Like they could have found a better way to impart the information to them rather than just having this like random psychic in town being like, oh yeah, I saw all this stuff in a vision and she knows about the 23 year cycle because that's what he does. This, this being. Yeah, she had a mag magical Indian. Yeah. That'd make him a lot more sense. <laughs> magical <laughs> Indian. Yeah, yeah. Well, they had, well, they had the, mad, she was magical African American, so that's, that's kind of like the that's same true. kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. But yeah, so she calls randomly because she knew where they were going to be, I guess. And it's just like, you know, if you hear that song, Jeepers Creepers, because that's, that song from the 1930s was, um, maybe that's why his truck was from the, maybe he thought his truck yeah. was from the 30s, because that yeah. song is from the 30s. Yeah, that's 30s Art Deco looking yeah. truck. Yeah. But she basically says, if you hear that song, you're in trouble, because I had a vision of Derry, like Darius, screaming somewhere and that in the little room, and, he, and that song is on. So if you hear that song, get the fuck out of wherever you are, because that means you're like in big trouble. So they don't believe her, obviously, because it sounds nuts. But then, as I said, the, you know, the creeper comes and like attacks him, because apparently he really likes the way that Darius smells, and once... I mean, the psychic even says once he gets, uh, you know, he sniffs you and he likes that smell, he's going to like just follow you like forever until he gets all your organs or whatever ones that he wants. So you're kind of like, because I didn't realize, and I was kind of thinking about this earlier. So would the creeper have come after uh, Derry and Trish if they hadn't seen him dumping those bodies? I kind of feel like he probably still would have because he was still chasing them, like with even before any of that happened. So I guess he had just like smelled him and was just kind of like, oh yeah, I need to like find out more about that dude. But then like when they saw the bodies, he's like, oh, well now I really have to like, you know what I mean? Because he could have killed Trish too, but he didn't. So I don't know. So I kind of feel like maybe them just being on that road, being at the wrong place at the wrong time, they were just kind of fucked either way. Like, I don't think there's any way they could have avoided it. So, so yeah. So basically like the last half of it or the last act is the creeper uh, you know, chasing after the two of them and the psychic like meeting up with them at this police station and her trying to like tell them what like, you know, what her dreams and visions were so they can like avoid getting eaten by it. One thing that I do actually like about this one, again, this is a spoiler alert, but this is an old ass movie. It's 20 years is doesn't seem like it though. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like that he that uh, that they went with a, a sad ending. Yeah. Because Justin Long's character, Derry, dies. Yeah. Um, his sister does actually try to uh, have the monster take her instead, but the monster doesn't want her. And, um, you know, and he basically takes, he takes him back to the lair, well, his new lair, because his old lair, it, you know, the cops found out about it, so he burned it down. So he goes to a new lair, and the last <coughs> shot is, you know, that is him, like, with the Justin Long's body hanging up, yeah. And it looks like he's hollowed out the back of his head and take, all, taken all his whole, eyeballs. The well, yeah. The whole body almost. You guys, I was yeah. earlier, I was watching a review, and it's like half an hour long or something. I was watching another review. I think it's the horror show. It's two guys and two girls. And they were talking about this movie, and they had legitimately like a 10-minute argument over whether, <laughs> over whether the monster just took the guy's eyes or if he hollowed the body out. I think he hollowed it I'm out. I'm like, he clearly hollowed it out because yeah. you could see the background through the eye holes. Yeah, he was and it's like, the mask. And it's funny because the one guy that had just watched the movie like the night before, he's like, no, he just took his eyeballs. And all the other ones are like, no, he hollowed out, or at least yeah. he hollowed out the head. Yeah. Because you could see the background like through the yeah. eye, eye sockets. It looked to me like he hollowed Dude out was the entire body. It looked, I mean, at least he did up. his head. Yeah. It wasn't hanging, it was standing. He yeah, have it up on like a platform. And well, and the and thing, wire. the thing too was like he, the other bodies looked like they were kind of partially preserved. They almost yeah. looked like porcelain. Well, remember some shit was dropping. From, yeah, like so I kind of, yeah, I kind of feel like maybe he had like resin or something like that. I thought yeah. he had made some kind of like, you know, like those fucking, yeah. you know, like when they did those corpses for, uh, you know, those weird body exhibits yeah. like at the museums. Something like that. But they, they had the like plasticine. Yeah. I thought it was something like that, although more like porcelain because it looked like the bodies were like porcelain sort of, like it had some kind of preservative on it. So I kind of figured, 
he had either hollowed out the whole body and put preservative on it, or he had just hollowed out the head and preserved it after that. So it's just, it was really funny to me because when I was watching the horror show, like the one guy that had watched all three movies, like the night before they recorded it was adamant that it's like, no, it was just the eyes that were gone. And everybody else is like, dude, you're, you're tripping. tripping. Yeah. It's like the, <laughs> you could see the background. Really. Clearly. And then the, like, he comes he up and like, like, like looks through the eye hole. Yeah. He's dumb. I'm like, yeah. you know, I'm like, I, he at least looked, took out the whole fucking back of the head or whatever. Yeah. I mean, because you can't see the background like through if you just take somebody's eyeballs out. There's a whole bunch of skull and brain back there. I had I had the feeling, the impression that he hollowed out the entire whole back of the body. That's it's what just, I thought it's too. Just an empty shell. You know, it's only the front. Yeah. The front parts of the sides. What, yeah, maybe he took a bunch of his. Well, because yeah. I don't know because I, he needed his eyes for sure. But you know, like the one great scene where Trish is just running the creeper over like over and over again, which like I said, is good. Cause in a horror movie, they just run him over and they're like, Oh, it's pretty. He's probably dead. Let's go. But she's just like, no, fuck that. She's backed over him and ran over him and backed over him. And it was like, Oh, until he was like squished. Um, she didn't know that he was a demon. I mean, cause that would kill a regular person. But then the creeper goes and invades the police station and starts eating like he eats a leg and an arm off one of the prisoners because that's his arm and leg were squished. Yeah. So he's like regenerating himself by eating those yeah. parts that he needed. <laughs> so so I don't know like what he does with all the extra body parts, but he seems to like to Next keep them. Yeah. yeah, he seems to like to keep them, but they, they definitely are preserved because they said some of the bodies down there look like they'd been there a long time. And that couple had been in there for 23 years Yeah, because they had gone missing 23 years before, like on that same road. So, I mean, this is actually for, for um, the early 2000s, I kind of feel like I don't really like a lot of the early 2000s horror movies. Um, a lot of, because a lot of them were remakes and uh, you know we're kind of like shitty remakes of like classic ones, Real and I corporate. and I didn't love that. Yeah, and a lot of them were just kind of like PG thirteen or yeah. kind of like teen kind of stuff. Yeah. Which this one's kind of like that too, but it's a little weirder though. It's a little weirder. I yeah. like that it has like three different. Like I said, I like that it goes from like a road movie to like a stalker serial killer type movie into like a monster movie. So I kind of thought that was kind of cool. I actually really liked, um, you know the the banter between Justin Long and Gina Phillips, they actually really did seem like brother and sister to me. Uh, so I really liked the relationship between the two of them. I know some people find them annoying. I did not. Um, they, I, they didn't seem annoying to me. Uh, but I, I can see there were a lot of movies that came out around this time period that did have like really annoying, like young adult characters, but I didn't find them annoying in this. And like I said, I really liked their kind of like back and forth, the brother and sister type thing. And I liked that they made them brother and sister. So they didn't shoehorn in some kind of like, Ooh, sexual tension, blah, blah, blah. I liked that they did a brother and sister. Now, interestingly, I don't know if this is the case, but a lot of people have speculated that back in the early nineties, there was actually a case that was kind of similar to the beginning of this movie where there was a brother and sister. I think it happened in Michigan. It was a brother and sister and they were driving, you know, somewhere and they saw somebody like a guy dumping a body like behind an abandoned building or a church or something like that. And they reported it to the police and it turned out that that guy had killed his wife. And so these two people who just happened to be driving by who were brother and sister like saw him and so the cops went to get him and then there was like a big shootout uh, and he killed himself. So a lot of people, there's some other details too that were kind of the same, but uh, you know, a lot of people speculated that was maybe one of the ideas for this, although the director said, has never confirmed or denied that. But I thought that was kind of interesting, that case. I read an article about it. But yeah, it was just like a dude that killed his wife, but somebody drove by and saw the fucking body. But yeah, I mean, other than... You know, uh, and like I said, I guess it's true of like most horror movies. If people didn't make stupid decisions, um, you know, no horror movies would happen probably. The one decision of him being like, well, we saw a guy dumping bodies down a pipe. Let's go back and see. Like, let's go check that out. Um, at least it wasn't nighttime. Uh, most normal people would not do that. Uh, so I thought like the justification for that was a little lame. But like I said, that didn't really bother me all that much. It's just like a fun monster movie and honestly like one of the best ones that came out in this era i think and i'm glad that i finally it's weird that i thought that i'd seen it but i hadn't some people like the second one better i kind of feel like the second one was pretty good too the second one i think was more straightforward it was just like a bus that was stranded on that stretch of road and then it was like near the end of the creeper cycle 
You know what I mean? Like he was going to go back into uh into whatever like into hibernation like an, in a day or two so they were trying to like hold out until that happened um and i remember that being good but i haven't seen the third one so i don't really know what's going on with that so like i said they they are making a new one like a a reboot or sequel trilogy or something like that and the first one is supposed to be out in 2022 although i'm not sure when i think that it has been shot like i think it has been filmed but i don't know like when it's going to come out so you know uh, but yeah, well, so you liked it, right? Oh yeah, I liked it. Yeah, it was good. I thought it was pretty good. It's just like a fun, it's like a fun monster movie. Yeah, and you know, I, I it's kind of movie where you know I was just watching it. I wasn't paying super close attention to all the details. I still had I still had a, a fun with it because it, it's shot real well. It's got a good um, uh, score. The edits good. It's got likable characters in it. It's creepy. It shows you some fucked up imagery. My imagination was kind of running wild with with it in certain spots I was imagining things that weren't there according to Jenny but <laughs> I thought at the end when he was looking through the damn face that he had a plan to go back and get her somehow that's what I thought it was about see I don't think that ever happens just, though I no. thought I mean I think she does turn up in right. some of the later ones I don't know I don't know if he was maybe going to use that that kid's body yeah, now yeah I thought it was going to happen right. but I mean just not not to get her but just because he needed a new one I don't really know I don't. I don't know how. Like I said, they never really say what he is. No, they don't explain. Anything he's kind of like a demon. But that's good that they don't I explain guess. it. They're not even sure. We, and he he's got things on him to kind of unfold. The more pissed off he gets, more of him kind of gets exposed. He's yeah, I liked that. Like with the little thing. things coming out his yeah. head. I thought that looked really cool. Yeah. Actually, yeah. you know what? They actually. I forgot to mention this. They actually wrote that role of the monster for Lance Henriksen. Okay. Yeah. But then he couldn't do it. Right. Um, so they got this other guy to do it, and, uh, what was his name? I can't remember. It's in here somewhere. But, um, yeah, it's just, it, it's just a good monster, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a cool monster. And it's shot really well. It's, like, high quality. Yeah. Jonathan Breck, that was the name of the guy that played the monster. But, yeah, it was originally written for, uh, Lance Henriksen, but then he, could, he couldn't do he it. He didn't say anything, did he? No. Yeah. Um, in the first cut of the film, I think he had one line of dialogue, but they cut it out because they thought it would be better if he didn't talk. Yeah. Um, which I agree with that. Honestly, well, like you said, monsters are better when they're mysterious. Yeah. So if they talk or if you demystify them too much, then they're not really scary anymore. Yeah. So like you said, I kind of like that they didn't really explain. Oh, she's trying to <laughs> dig through the book. <laughs> she's digging through the book. Um, they didn't really explain. Okay, knock it off, Pokey. Yeah. They didn't really explain like where, but that's kind of more realistic because you would know if this just happened every twenty three years and people yeah. disappeared just mysteriously and never turned up anywhere, um, you know, and maybe some urban legends like came about it, but you wouldn't know like who that. How would you know that? I mean, the only reason that anybody knew anything about it was because of the psychic, like she knew. So, which, like I said, I guess there are worse ways to get that across. But, um, you know, she's gonna dig through the books. Well, you can't stop her. I can't stop. <laughs> I mean, she's just gonna do it. Yeah. But yeah. So, uh, what does everybody think about this movie? Uh, can you watch it knowing what the director <coughs> did? Um, you know, I had actually forgotten about it until I looked it up later, and I was just like, "Oh yeah, that's that guy." I remembered it more like after something when I was reading something about Powder. The director's uh, just one person on that team, man. A lot of people worked on this. That's what you I mean. It, movies, in, so. a way, in a way, in a way, yeah. it's kind of like easier to justify it, like when it's a movie, because, like you said, yeah, that's just one dude. That's just yeah, one he's dude. the director, there's but a bunch of people involved. Yeah, there's actors, there's yeah. screenwriters, there's you the know, whole although damn he, crew of people. yeah, there's a whole crew of people. Yeah. Although he's a screenwriter on this too, but yeah. but yeah, so yeah, this is like a pretty decent uh, flick, and I'm actually surprised I hadn't uh, seen it before now. So I'm glad I finally got to see it. So uh, tell us what you think about it in the comments. And we will see you guys on the next one. Bye.